to just say welcome to EDU 600 and thank you for enrolling in the accelerated online version. Uh, it's it's a it's a wild ride. It's a wild seven weeks. I mean, it's it's controlled. It's uh, we're in week three already, which is something quite remarkable. I'm I'm going to teach uh, shortened courses, uh, so this isn't new. But it um, with this um, design, I think it is a new experience for me to try to put quite as much into this course. Um, and with the TESOL special ed and teacher leadership groups coming together, it resembles what I've taught before, but um, I've even had usually other um, graduate programs involved. So this is kind of a specialized version as well. So I wanted to just thank you all again for, for doing, for being the, the, the leaders in the classroom, in the virtual classroom that you are, spending a few extra minutes here just uh, talking and, and sharing on this uh, video conference. So I appreciate that. Um, once upon a time when I was doing Zoom, I don't know, four or five, three, four or five years ago, this was kind of unusual. Now everybody's just got Zoom headache, and, you know, and we're on overload and it's being used for things which really, it's maybe a, a stretch to see if it really works. But I think nonetheless, um, these are times when we need to stretch and use whatever we can. So I'm not surprised. Um, Okay, so let me just tell you, kind of give a situation and we can talk about what questions you have. So we're in the middle of the second, the third module, which places us squarely in the qualitative research component of this course. We're going to um, really wrap that up. And I think everyone has had um, a good uh, chance to do the reading. Although, you know, in a matter of weeks, you've read a couple of chapters and responded very nicely to some of the model articles that I presented. So that whole first two weeks pretty much gives you the rhythm of the course. That is, um, the discussion forums are become places to learn new concepts, but also places to practice with articles that I put in your hands. And the reason I put those articles in everyone's hands to look at is because I know what's there and I know the kind of things you're gonna learn and I can anticipate the discussion. It relieves you of having to find your own article and bring it in and talk about it. And so you can go look for your articles and think, okay, what, is the, what are the kind of things that we're getting as examples and what are the, the kind of things I'm finding? So I'm gonna stick with that. I, I don't know that I'm gonna change that. Um, so using those models has been important because we use models for the qualitative critique, for the visual displays of data, and then we do use some models for the experimental critique or that quantitative, in-depth quantitative um, critique, and that's coming up. Um, and all the while, you're getting a chance. I call it the long, skinny assignment. You're finding your six articles, you're creating a, an organizer for those, and looking at what, looking more in depth at analyzing and evaluating those six articles in preparation for writing your final review. So that's the big goal in mind. And the rest of this is learning to support that and learning to inform that. And so I'm just trying to push um, the discussion as far as I can. Uh, at the same time, you're going about your business, you're going about that whole um, process of you know searching and capturing the articles, sharing them with me, and then we're talking back and forth. And so I have the, the great, the fun of seeing all the articles and talking back and forth with each of you individually. So did, um, so let me just stop there um, and, and just uh, kind of ask, just maybe just say a little bit about yourself and, and if you have any, what's a question you, or, or kind of a goal for being here? What, what's something I can answer today to help you with this course? I'm struggling with finding newer um, articles, things that are, because the field or the thing that I'm researching, you know, is, has been researched for a long time, and maybe I should have picked something different that's been something so, you know, passionate to me, but mm -hmm. I'm having trouble finding anything new, fresh. About up, what? About, ther uh, using, I'm using therapy dogs in the classroom, but I was trying to change it up to be therapy dogs used in the emotional behavioral disorder. Mm -hmm. classroom as opposed to just ASD is all over the place I mean ASD I can do I, I actually have one article about that um, I was trying to find a different route or avenue so that it was more interesting and that's just an area I was struggling with finding like a 
fresh new material. I ended up having to pick an article from dogs being used on campuses for college to ease anxiety. Um, you know, I'm just, I don't want to piecemeal too much. I'm trying to narrow it down and I'm just struggling with that. I think maybe right. because I'm 40 and haven't been in college since I was whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, not to worry. Okay. <laughs> well, I think, okay. So to your point uh, then, um, the idea of getting recent research um, is important in some questions, um, might not be as critical or as important to have really, really fresh recent articles. Um, the point is to find, you know, articles that, that are primary research. So if you're doing that, you're, you're good. The second point you were making, though, is are they really focusing and really coherent? That is hitting a target around what you want and you might that that's a bit more challenging and so i think you have to allow possibly not necessarily for some articles that are close so you're sampling around a topic it might be that it's not exactly the age group you want for all six articles so you need to then make that jump from one age group to the other that is infer you know they found this for one age group like high schoolers we don't have research on middle schoolers Right. And that's likely in a lot of topic areas. So okay. you have to give yourself as a researcher the license to make those inferences as well. Now, if you were going to, now this is a, a course that, you know, starts up and in a matter of seven weeks, we're done. If you were doing a dissertation and working on this over a year or over months, just searching, I'd say, yeah, you, you need to really dig deeper into this or maybe you need to have 30 articles or 40 or 50 but what we're trying to do is find models here and learn about the research design so i so there's a little you kind of have a little bit of a trade off there but i would say over time Kristen over the next couple of weeks you'll have a chance to look again and you'll have a you know and here's another thing um what we have i think we have this but i would suggest and i'd be glad to help facilitate this that we consult the usm librarians the reference librarians and ask them okay um, you know once you've gone through this process yourself i think you're you have a pretty good idea of search terms modifications mm -hmm. and all those kind of things but they're the experts and i work with tim lynch and daniel lawrence and um others there who are dying they're, the librarians are just sitting there like this waiting for us to ask them questions. They're just like so happy when we ask them a question. So let's do that. Okay. Um, and see if we can't get uh, some other resources enlisted here. I always love to get them involved and um, I am delighted. Is, I'm delighted that you're interested in pet therapy. I think it's great. I, <laughs> I it's, that's wonderful. Yep. So that's my, my thought. And, but good, good point, you know, in some things we, we do want to have the most recent, you know, if it's a therapeutic um, uh, intervention that's recent or is, you know, a, you know has some kind of uh, a drug uh, or, or a medication that's related to it, certainly, certainly you think of COVID-19, I mean, we're tossing around stuff just like, you know, it's just going right, left and sideways. Um, but we want the most recent, we want something that's, you know, going to tell us um, something right now. So um, how about you, Matt? What's something we can answer today? Uh, well, I think a lot of um, what Kristen was saying around the, um, the article search was kind of uh, at first troubling for me. Uh, the fact I'm, I'm going and researching trauma-informed care in, uh, in the classroom setting uh, and when I first did that, I um, received, I think it was 60,000 um, results. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously having to cut that down substantially. Um, and I found, you know, through the discussion board, I found a lot of ways to kind of narrow that down. Um, and I was able to do that for the last capture. Um, but I do think a lot of that is finding kind of research reviews too. Um, so having to be able, you know, being able to kind of navigate the search system a little bit um, more comprehensively. Um, I've been out of school for a while and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, coming back to it, this is my first class back. So 
um, you know, getting back into the swing of just the overall, um, you know, being a student again is kind of a, a quandary for me. <laughs> yeah, it's a challenge. It is to, 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 you know, see, here's your, here's your weekly diet of expectations. And this accelerated format is like fast food. And on top of fast food, I don't know if, uh, if you've ever seen the, the uh, silent film by Charlie Chaplin called Modern Times. Where he's on a he's on a conveyor belt and they're forcing food. They they want to feed the workers while they're working. If Google that one, it's hilarious. I mean, I don't know. I'm a you know a silent film fan, and it it really is kind of I'm, it it feels like that. I'm trying to make it not that. <laughs> but I think you know, Saturday, like Saturday morning from five a.m. until noon is when I get all my schoolwork done because I can't do it during the week with right. teaching. Mm -hmm. And my kids know you just don't talk to mom. I'm just like <laughs> researching. I'm getting modules done. I got to type this and yeah. Saturday morning, get it banged out. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. Good for you. I think that that's, um, you know, you've got great kids if they respect that space. Um, so, um, but let me get back a little bit to what you're saying also, because Matt, you, you had a couple of cues there that I think are important. Um, one of them is finding research that the, through database searching and, you know, uh, you know, taking on all those skills, you know, those real nifty skills where we use search terms. But if you think of the word trauma and you do a search for the word trauma or trauma informed or whatever it is, trauma is going to go out and you're going to get all the articles that have the word trauma in the title. So that is a vast literature um, that goes into healthcare depending yep. on the database that you have. And what, what I think is, you know, kind of difficult is finding out what are some secondary or alternative search key terms that will give you the same thing, but also how do you then narrow down? How do you converge? And my whole, my whole thing with searching has been to come up with a converging method, which I've mentioned on, um, the discussion forums where you really have to add that last term, either interviews, qualitative or experiment, something that absolutely forces that search engine to go right as, as hard as they can to primary research. And that takes hundreds usually down to 20. And it's in it, but in doing so, it's an accurate reflection of the amount of primary research that there is out there relative to all the stuff that's out there. So there's a ton of stuff on the internet now, blah, 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 internet, really. Um, but it's important to know how do you go right at that primary research, which we all need. And I think nowadays people are like, oh, we need research. Well, you know, 25 years ago, people were saying like, eh, research, who needs it? Well, I think it's, it's pretty clear that there's a value. Now, I don't want researchers to run the universe either, <laughs> because that would be a place where be like, what did you say? What was that curve? I don't know. I don't, you know. So I think there's a, a great in-between space that you're in trying to take as a practitioner what you're learning in that depth and those really great in-depth examples and finding a way to help that bridge or make that contribution to your practice. Not easy, but it's worth it. Absolutely. So, so we'll keep hacking away at it. Um, and I think so far, so far, so good. I mean, from what I saw from the first article captures, which I hope everyone had a chance to, to see the, the feedback, people are hitting the target pretty well. Um, and we'll just keep going. So Jessica, how are you doing? Great doing to see well. you. How are you? I'm doing fine, fine, fine. So my biggest thing with um, this class and the research and stuff like that, I guess is kind of piggybacking off of Matthew and Christian, uh, Kristen, is, you know, being able to narrow down my search. Because I did um, dogs used as reading aids. So having a dog in the classroom and looking at the reading scores of the students that are utilizing the dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also the one that just got the puppy, so... <laughs> That's I'll say she's got her baby. That's funny. So um, when I started, I, I went really broad and I ended up with like 123,000 results. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of them were about like dogs in, you know, 
therapy dogs or, you know, service dogs, things like that. Um, and then I did dogs and or canines in reading and I turned up a lot less results, but still, mm -hmm. you know, a, a couple thousand. And then I did um, canines and reading scores. I think I did qualitative at the end of it. And I ended up with maybe 120 something. Mm -hmm. So I definitely narrowed it down. But that was the, kind of my biggest worry going into it is when we had to find six articles and then, you know, have to then write a, a critique on it. You know, that's 15 pages long. Mm -hmm. Granted, I'm, I'm not necessarily new, you know, or back to school. I haven't been out of school that long. Mm -hmm. um, but this is my, well, third class, but I'm taking, this will be my, of four. So I kind of have a lot going on and it, mm -hmm. it actually ties in really well with some of the other classes that I've taken or that I'm taking now. So I'm kind of interested to see how it plays out when I get to do the critique and how it, it forms. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, that's good. Another one with me. Jessica and I have been together now since January. We've been in all the classes together. Okay. We just see each other when it's funny because you guys, every professor asks to, to give a little bit about yourself. And it's like, hi again, Jessica, and hi again, <laughs> whoever. So we're on the same page here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I noticed I noticed that there was some camaraderie there, which I think is always great to see. And I think there was a couple of people who were in the teacher leadership uh, as well. So it, that's it's fun to see. And, and it is part of the what we were hoping to get as a cohort you know, of uh, people involved and so you're in the special special ed cohort right yep and uh with walter kimball have you had yep. classes with walter walter's awesome he was our first two courses and now i've got you and uh will roy mm -hmm. yeah me too <laughs> okay okay well, i don't I, I let's see i was just trying to think of you know whether i know him or not but i i i, I don't but i think it's uh it is something to um to see just just how much invested you are in this, and we are trying to be conscious about connections. And so I've been um, teaching V six hundred for a long time, and I'm very conscious of the connections with multiple fields. And this course is, in fact, the only course where you have people breaking out of their silos. So I and I find that to be a very liberating, I um you know, a moment for everybody. Um, it, it means that you're going to be looking outside a little bit, but then you get to go back. Then everything closes down and you go back into the, you know, and, and, and make that switch uh, back to your degree and back to your, you know, area of emphasis. Uh, but you do so with, with a study or with a set of studies in a review that I think will help you. Hopefully that, you know, for your uh, capstone or your whatever final kind of course you have. Um, so just tell me a moment, just a little bit about the, that course. Is there a capstone or a final project or what's the, what are we leading to in special ed? Um, at the end, I think there's the capstone self-directed study. Okay. And it so will I be on a topic of your choice. I think so. Oh, yeah. Can you guess what mine would be? <laughs> well, as it should, as it should be. Right. So, and, and I think that'll be in December, right, Jessica? We should be done in December if we continue this pat pattern because um, Mr. or Dr. Kimball, he is the one that's, he keeps setting me up. He keeps saying, I'm signing you up. These are your next two. I'm signing you up. These are your next two. So I should be done by Christmas. So oh, easily, easily. Oh my goodness. You, you, if you've already taken four courses, you have, yeah, you'll be done by then. The sessions go very quickly. Yeah. Um, so again, Keep these, what I'm trying to do in this course is set you up for that experience. Okay. Okay. So, you know, keep that in mind. And um, I think I, as far as I can tell, and so what I'll do is get in touch with Walter and, and we'll have a chat with Walter just to kind of, you know, mid, mid course, just, you know, make sure that we're um, calibrating where we're headed. I've, I've tried to do that on a number of occasions and I'll just continue to um, make sure we're headed in the right direction. Um, from what I know, we're, we're definitely there. Um, I don't know if I need to, I, I doubt that we're going to make any many modifications, but what, let's just talk about that because uh, I, I think one of the things that we're doing well right now is the critiques. I think everyone is kind of in their groups. You have your articles, you have a good idea of kind of what it 
hopefully of what it looks like. Um, there are some exemplars of what the final, cr the, the critiques, the individual qualitative critique looks like. So I want you to look at the rubrics, look at the examples. Um, I can put more examples in there, but um, you know, the, the, the assignments folders for each one of them uh, uh, is embedded on each one of the modules. When it's due, it's there. So if you've been able to look through the course, I think the course is all opened up, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm making some tweak, I'm tweaking some of the modules that we're getting to, but I think so far we're, we're pretty, pretty solid um, up through module four. Um, module seven is when the critique um, that final review happens. So let me just give you a, just a little bit of a walkthrough of what that is. Um, and to your, to your point, um, I think that the, the if you, I, and people always want to know how many pages I have to write. I'm not a big page hound. I like concise writing. You might have gathered that already, that I like really focused writing where you provide enough of, an, of a set of, of understandings that I know you understand what you're talking about. I don't have to be, you don't have to be thorough, thorough. You're not doing a diagnosis of the article. You're doing a summary of, and with evidence from the article to help me understand that you know about sampling, that you know about measurement, you know about data analysis. That's what I'm interested in. And it conveys to me that you know those research categories or those big concepts, the framework of what uh, what I try to use to uh, help understand and interpret research. So, you know, for maybe for another course, someone might say, write that 30 page paper. I have no interest in a 30 page paper. It doesn't do anything for me. Um, but what I do know is that you are, you are, you get the chance to write about all six articles. So now you have to choose. Sometimes that even forces you to think more than writing more and more and more. So 12 to 15 pages is, is the goal. It can be done in 12. It could be done in a little few more. But if you're at that 16th page and you're still writing, you know, on sample or data collection, stop, hit the brakes, know that you're already going, this is a draft and you're going to have to cut. And I can, and one of the things I can do, and I want people to know this, and I'll tell, I'll say this, I haven't said it yet, but I'm willing to read drafts as you write. So I'll be your, I'll be your editor, uh, and I can tell you, I'm a, I'm a slash and burn editor. I can <laughs> tell you if things need to be cut and how to do that. And I think it's good to know that. You know, as professionals, we don't want to write long. When you're asked by your principal or your director or your state representative or whoever to write a summary, write a one page. It's all you get. Or maybe you get 250 words. That's all you get. And so that's what I'm striving for. How do you make the point? and make it in, in just that way. Um, so that's what the, the, all the writings are about. And right up to the review, the review is a 15 page paper max, 16, that's it. So it's doable. Um, and along the way, I just wanted to show you something. Along the way is what I wanted to say. We get, we, there is a, a process here. So um, let me just share the screen here. So here's a kind of what our topics of the day. We've talked about your questions. Um, we'll, we'll do a wrap up here. Uh, the qualitative research is going on. Let me zoom in here a little bit, click in. So we've talked quite a bit about the, um, the final review, but I wanted to just say one more thing about that. And that is once you get your six um, articles, then what we do is create a table or a comparison matrix. So when you write your paper, um, your final paper, it's not like you write six critiques and then staple it together. You're writing an, what I call a, a synthesis review. So your base, your and, and and the comparison matrix is a is a strategy for you to collect all the articles in on one table so that then you can do an in-depth analysis and evaluation with already having gone through each article systematically. That, you know, in a, in a way that's much more abbreviated, but just as thorough as writing. So you're, 
going through there and I can show you uh, what that looks like. Um, but it's a table that has all six articles on, the, on six rows and going down the columns are those categories, purpose and design, sampling, data collection, data analysis, and overall quality. And you do this in a way that really does, you know, create a, a concise, a absolutely packed table with all this information in it. And once you do that, it's, it's like, oh, I get it. That's how they all fit together. That's where they all are. So that's going to be, um, and there's a, um, we'll talk more about this and I'll encourage you um, to, to turn that in. It's not that, uh, I'd like to see that before you write your paper and it's also due and accompanies with your paper at the final, with the final product. With, so it's writing and a two page table. So it's like condense, 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 um, and do that step-by-step -step analysis of the six articles. Once you do that, um, there are some other things that we can talk about um, that help to, to uh, uh, pull out the themes and what I call the themes and patterns of your six articles. So you're talking about um, pets and reading, Jessica. Well, what, what, are, what have you found about pets and reading? You know, and so we wanna know what are, the, what are those um, big inferences you can draw from reading these six articles that run either across the articles or that are clear, clearly um, relevant to a few of the articles, but not all, you know, so, uh, and, or, or it may stand out and are very important, but um, only found in one article. So you're looking for trends, themes, patterns, things that um, help you to characterize those articles. So how does that sound? I like the idea of the table, of a table for sure because it, it I think it will help organize the information for for me anyway my brain can't take all of that and and try to just throw it in I like no, that. I remember trying to do that um, as, a, as a student early early on and I just found it very difficult and finally hit on this idea of a table um, and you saw it, it, it pointed it out on, in uh, page what is it page three 301, 302 in the book. So I've already kind of pointed to it in a couple of ways. So what do you think, Jessica? That sounds a lot better to me. It makes the, you know, 16 page max, you know, sound more doable, especially if I can see all the information and then put it on paper, you know, lengthen it or condense it, but lengthen it at the same time, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's like pizza dough. Either we make it thick crust or thin crust. You spin it a lot or you roll it out or you bunch it together. <laughs> do you want a calzone? Or... <laughs> I don't know. Do you, I mean, how do you want it? Exactly. As I've been reading um, the book and stuff like that and going through my, my articles and doing my, um, you know, my captures and stuff, I've been using a table. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually really like, um, I think it was on one of the first videos that there was a table to look at and then you talked about each point point. Yeah. and it really, I, I listened to what you had to say and I took notes based on what was on the, the table mm -hmm. for the graph or the organizer. You know, it just, it made it a lot easier to understand and to process so mm -hmm. that I wasn't just looking at the whole, I was looking mm -hmm. at the parts one by one. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, that's good to know. And I think I'll, what I'll do is I, I, had a, a, a video that I made e long ago on the final review, and I will go ahead and make sure that I do that. I'll, make, I'll create another one. I want to put that out there maybe this next week so that people aren't uh, struggling on this. Um, maybe the, the, the uh, one I do on Friday will have a, a shout out to the final review in some detail. Yeah, what about you, Matt? Um, I think the table is going to make life a lot easier. Um, it's definitely um, I was kind of struggling with it, like Jessica, I was thinking of the idea of how am I supposed to remember what's in all six of these articles, mm -hmm. uh, putting them into, you know, and then putting the ideas into actual context. Um, so having the matrix, I think is going to be uh, beneficial. I think what, you know, um, candidly, what I'm going to struggle with is the, uh, the um, condensing of language, I think. <laughs> I have a tendency to over talk and to over, uh, overwrite. Um, mm -hmm. So I do think that's going to be a point of uh, emphasis when I start writing the final review. Mm -hmm. I think when you're getting your undergrad too, like you, 
all, we all learned how to BS right. So we, you, you had to like stretch it out. You had to like put all these fancy words in there, find synonyms and antonyms. Like you wanted to make it sound so elaborate and this forces you to get to like the nuts and bolts and use the, you know, the correct language and the correct, like it's true research, which is not my wheelhouse. So for me, that's my struggle. I'm learning how to research appropriately, I guess as opposed to the past where you just took every book you could and then just vomited out the information. Right. 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 And I understand that because I was, you know, I certainly became a, a master at doing that. And <laughs> after a while, it just kind of made me kind of like, just wonder what the heck I was doing. And I really, along the way, lost my sense of who I was as a writer because all I was doing was just throwing stuff in there. Mm -hmm. I really did. And I had to rediscover what writing was, you know, and I, that took, that takes a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but I do depend on the writing because it does force you to think about the ideas and fit them with something of interest to you. So it's right there. It's just a matter of how do you pull these things together and how do you then not um, overstress yourself by trying to do writing on, first of all, these six articles, which some of which might be very difficult. Second of all, writing in, in about research, which is a new topic, which is something, it's strange language. It's a second language almost. Yep. Um, and uh, that it's, it's dense academic language. And so there is, a, there is a struggle there, but the key that we're trying to get there is that one thing that, that unlocks it really is putting, it in, putting everything into a table. So, and, you know, the idea is to find the articles mm -hmm. or at least as many as you can and then to keep settling on them and then make that first step in the table. So like I said, I think by, uh, Friday, that'll be my uh, part of the part of the pitch I make on where we are in the course. So that, um, you know, try to make this as uh, six quick as, as so you can see the end in mind. I mean, this is about, you know, we're, we're almost we'll be halfway into the course by next week. So I want you to have the end in mind pretty uh, firmly in hand. So that's good. Um, the thing that does make this a little bit challenging though is many of you are going are learning about the types of designs as you're getting the articles that's challenging so you just have to be patient with that there is a an element of just you know hang in there we're going to get there and what i'll try to do with each of you is give you individual feedback as to where you want to go to learn more about these in the textbook so if it's you know a correlational study i'll point you there if it's a another if it's a uh, uh, maybe a multi-methods or mixed methods study there or qualitative there um, and make that something that you can um, manage a little bit but individualize I, I find i have to do a lot of individualizing there um, so that's the that's the plan there um, let me just stop there and i just wanted to then um, I think what I'll do is, is share the screen of the, um, the Blackboard website. Jessica, in Jacksonville, Florida, where I taught for seven years, we had the Reed Dogs at our school. And there might be a case study about that out there, I'm not sure. But if you look up Jacksonville, Florida, read dogs, you might find something. I just wanted to Thank you. give you that heads up. Jacksonville. So where did you, where, 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 what school did you teach in in Jacksonville? I taught at Highlands Elementary and Willow was the first um, service dog turned therapy dog ever. Um, I wrote a pilot program and the uh, superintendent quit that next year and went out to Michigan and implemented therapy dogs in his school after taking my pilot program. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, but he didn't give her any recognition. You no, know, well, of course not. Wait, on it. What school leader ever gives anyone any recognition? <laughs> you, you find me one school leader who ever acknowledges any idea from someone else, please. <laughs> I want to know that person. Anyway, I love, I, you know, I was just um, thinking of, I went to a, 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 a an elementary school in Jacksonville, right? Yeah, That's Florida. Right. It had like 2,500 students in it. It was a 
it was a massive elementary school. I've never seen anything so big in my life. Yeah, that was pretty big. I we only had about um, eight hundred, so it wasn't Highlands. It wasn't me. Yeah. Anyway, but, that that was I was you know down there on a job search eons ago. So that's a good lead. So what I wanted to say then for the um, the art the 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 Blackboard website um, is that the course modules the the setup of the course modules is is no different i am like i said i'm tweaking some of the things that are in there but so far so good with the flow of the course um i don't blackboard isn't the most beautiful or elegant um learning management system but it works mm -hmm. and i've tried to keep it manageable um i hope it's okay uh, that i've the one thing i have done is a link the discussion forums to the big page in the discussion forums so you have to go find it um that's that's as that's as good as it gets for me i it's awesome i'm gun shy of trying trying to do anything more than that although people do it but it works um so we're set up um i i know i chose the tuesday and friday as as discussion due dates um i i, I don't i'm not sure i should change that now i think well, it once you do I something, I always get in by Sunday, and I felt bad, but I looked and I saw that a lot of other people didn't do. But it, but Friday was almost impossible, just because I'm I'm usually zooming till four o'clock with students, and right. and I'm, I'm like burnt. You're burnt. But, <laughs> but so, I do, so, I get all so, my work done Saturday morning. Well, so so let me ask you this: Would it would it make it? I mean, it's certainly nothing that is incumbent on me to say those two days. Would it be better to say Wednesday and Saturday, or does it make a difference? I mean, as long as you don't dock me for putting it in on Saturday. <laughs> I don't, you know, but it, even if, even if I said Wednesday and Saturday, people would, it would be the same thing. Yeah. It's, 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 I just need people to be interacting there and getting the most that you can out of this because the learning happens there. I think the, I think the discussion boards are great. I think everybody taught, like we've all found out a ton about each other, mm -hmm. you know, and then like, um, everybody i mean we just all are sharing our personal back like information and i'll be picking everybody's brains well i think the the the, the levels the three things that i've seen first of all our sharing of who we are that's always fun it really is and especially right. as you start to see the connections if you have some you know mates who are in the similar programs um the other part um i think that's really interesting is the level of connection that people are making from the readings to the things that you're writing and i'm finding that 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 tells me that it that you're you're doing the things that are necessary to inform the discussion that it's not just a like you say layers of bs in the discussion forum that's a good thing and the other thing is those jigsaw groups for the critiques um, i see people talking back and forth so i like that kind of thing and and those are uh the the that's another little technique that I've found very helpful is to break things down more puppies look more puppies how many how many Kristen I have five and about 50 chickens a goat who just had a baby two weeks ago I delivered it live on zoom um, in front of my whole everybody was having cocktails at 3 30 they call it bowling but we all got on zoom and we were bowling um and i wasn't there and they said where's Kristen?" and i have a live goat cam out in my goat shack uh -huh. and one of my friends pulled it up and did a screen share on zoom and they saw me all out there like oh my god freaking out <laughs> delivering a baby goat so <laughs> okay well so there you go yeah. i have five dogs i have a hairless cat three kids a federal a uh, police officer for a husband and i live in hollis <laughs> oh, yeah. well, it sounds like fun <laughs> it's, it's non-stop it's it's crazy that's hilarious so funny okay well Sorry. um um that i don't want to go too much further today um i think this has been very helpful um i th want to say that next week we take the turn to quantitative mm -hmm. land we leave the this kind of different and more human side of things, which I think is really professionally more relevant, we go into quantitative, which is professionally more instrumental and kind of more of, of what we're used to in many cases. Um, 
I, I like to make sure that we have a balanced view of qualitative and quantitative, but nevertheless, we'll do quantitative. And um, one of the things we'll do uh, as an assignment there is to create what I call visual displays of data, which in some cases might be something like trend data. Have you done like trend data, data lines and data representations for courses? Yep. Something like that. But it could be not for a personal behavior, it might be for a bigger data set, something that's coming out of a school district or a state or a national report that you find relevant or interesting for you. Um, uh, Jessica, I, I, I am now so, and, and Kristen, I'm so enamored by this uh, idea of pet therapy that I'm going to go find a national data set on animals. I'm going to, it's out there. Now, what would be really intriguing is to see the difference between the low socioeconomic status of like the Duval County public school system and then a much higher up here in Maine. There's a huge difference in the types of schooling. That would be cool to to research. I'm not saying I'm I'm not changing anything. You no, 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 but, but really intriguing to see that difference. Right. A lot and of those I, kiddos there didn't have dogs of their own. Right. You know, so. Well, and I think that's one of the things that that uh, you know we'll, we're you know, certainly uh, have that as a uh, one of the themes that that's good to make, point out and make reference to is the inequities, uh, social justice, all the things that are the underlying. And so, when we get to quantitative research, we'll be able to see that more explicitly. Yep. Um, so that's one of the things. There are uh, lots of, of of sample data sets, and data visualization has become quite um, the the rage now, um, as you can see with all of the data displays we're seeing with flattening curves. I mean, imagine, imagine me a statistician, how happy I am to hear discussions like this. <laughs> I've never heard anyone say the th flattening a curve on national TV as much as they have. <laughs> Are we close? <laughs> I think we're close to the curve, right? The, the we're, top peak. We're, 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 we're definitely flattening the curve. So there's some interesting discussions. I didn't want to bring COVID-19 into this course too much. And then I thought I'm going to bring it in a lot. And I said, no, yes, no. We could bring it in in one of these quantitative discussions. So nice. I'm going to go find some data. Uh, oh, I, no, yeah, I should just go to the CDC. I'll put the CDC data set in there um, and or some of the representations in there. But the idea really is to understand, the, and the point being, we can convey much more information, as we know, in a graph and an explanation than we can just through an explanation alone. We can, we can uh, engage much deeper problem solving. But you, you, in order to get the most out of this, you need to have the text, the numbers, and the graph. So we want to work in the combination of those three things. On our on our visual displays assignment. So, thanks for thanks for joining. We should have a you should make a discussion thread about what we discussed here, so we can get everybody else to come next time. Right, I will. I'll, I'll go ahead and post. Uh, we'll post this. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, download this, create a YouTube, and we'll get it out there. <laughs> awesome. Sounds good. Okay. Good. All right. So. Um, Kristen, Matt, Jessica, thank you. So what's your takeaway, Kristen, from today's discussion? I want to leave it with you guys. My takeaway is that I, I, there are other ways for me to use the search engine, other words that I can use in there to kind of narrow things down. Um, and that I also need to be more lenient with the fact that I might have to pull from different samples. And, and Matt said something interesting. Research reviews are very important. I don't know that I've seen a review on pet therapy like a really really thorough review but i'm going to go look now well that and that was that was the heartbreaking part i would find something with the perfect title and then i look and it's a review of three other right things mm -hmm. or three other you know studies so then i'm looking through where they got their info from to kind of right. see if there's anything i want to use from there so i i just kept finding these beautifully written titles and it turns out they were or they were a review instead of a of an actual study. You know, so. It's interesting. That, that's kind of what, what I'm going to call the research mirage. It is a little bit of a, you see something and it's like, oh, you get close to it and it disappears. Yes. Yeah. What a beautiful term. There you go. You've just coined a term. I just coined a term. Yeah. Hey, Matt, how about you? What's your takeaway? 
Um, I think that it's not as uh, daunting of a task um, as originally I had thought. Um, you know, looking at, um, always looking ahead at kind of the final um, the capstone evaluation of the course um, and not really having a background in research. Um, I was uh, a little anxious about the material leading up to the point, um, but I think after sitting down listening today, um, you know, and having the ability to kind of visualize and create the matrix and taking those steps um, will definitely make it uh, not as cumbersome of a process as originally I had thought. Okay, great. We'll work on that. How about you, Jessica? Uh, my biggest takeaway is to, you know, again, piggy off, back off Matt, is, you know, not having, you know, such a fear, if you will, or an apprehension to the, the final task. Um, I really do like the modules and how they're set up because I feel like there's a little, you know, there's a little bit more to each one that's going to obviously help us with the end product. I like steps. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Baby steps. All little I, baby steps. I, I, love, I love your exemplars too. That really, cause I'm not, I'm not a researcher and I'm not into that. So when I see it, that really helped me understand that it was very clearly defined. Like this is what you need to do. You don't need to write a bunch of stuff right now. You just need to focus on this, 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 and this. Right. That well, thank you. You know, one of the things, one of the, one of the strategies that I found to be so effective and, and it really changed my teaching was worked examples and exemplars. I never knew how powerful they were and I've worked them a lot of different ways. And so there's more coming. So don't, don't worry. There's more coming. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you all. Have a great evening. Uh, thank hope, you. Hopefully quiet, relax, take it easy. It's dinner time. It's It'll dinner. be. <laughs> oh, I, can, I can hear the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Take care now. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. See you soon. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.